Why, because I like to wear my gloves in winter? No. Because there isn't the least bit of adventure in you. You know what you are, Paul? Mm -hmm. You're a watcher. You're a watcher. There are watchers in this world and there are doers. And the watchers sit around watching the doers do. Well, tonight you watched and I did. Yeah, well, it was a little bit harder to watch what you did than it was for you to do what I was watching. You can't even relax for one evening. I don't know, Paul. Sometimes you act like a... What? Hmm? A stuffed shirt? Is that it? I mm -hmm. didn't say that. No. Oh, that's what you're implying, I uh, know that's what you're anticipating. Mm. I didn't say stuffed shirt. Mm -hmm. But you're extremely proper and dignified. Proper and dignified? When was I proper and dignified? The other night at Delfino's, you were drunk, right? Right, I was stoned. Exactly. I didn't even know it until you told me in the morning. I mean, you're a funny kind of drunk, Paul. You just sat around looking unhappy, watching your coat. I was watching my coat because I saw someone else watching my coat. Look, if you want, I'll get drunk for you sometime. Make your hair stand on end. A little necessary. Do you know that in uh, Harry's bar last New Year's Eve, I punched an old woman? No, don't tell me about drunk. What else? What else was I proper and dignified? All the time. You're always dressed right. You always look right. You always say the right thing. You're very nearly perfect. That's a rotten thing to say. Before we were married, I thought you slept with a tie. No, just for very formal sleeps. Well, you have absolutely no sense of the ridiculous. Like last Thursday night, you wouldn't walk barefoot with me in Washington Square Park. Why not? Simple answer. It was 17 degrees. Exactly. It's very logical, it's very sensible, and it's no fun. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I am a little bit too proper and dignified for you. Maybe you would have been happier with somebody a little bit more colorful and flamboyant, like the geek. Well, it'd be a lot more laughs than a stuffed shirt. Well, I thought you said I wasn't. Well, you are now. I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not going to listen to this. I have a case in court in the morning. Well, where are you going? To sleep. Now? How can you go to sleep now? I'm going to close my eyes and count Kenichis. Good night, dear. You cannot go to sleep now, Paul. We're having a fight. Well, you have the fight. When you're through, would you turn off these lights, please? Oh, that gets me absolutely insane. You can even control your emotions. No, no, no. I'm just as upset as you are. But when I get hungry, I eat. When I get tired, I sleep. And you eat and sleep, too? Don't deny it. I've seen you. Not in the middle of a crisis. Cry? What crisis? We're just yelling. You don't consider this a crisis. Our whole marriage is hanging in the balance. It is? When did this happen? Just now, it has suddenly become very clear to me that you and I have absolutely nothing in common. Why, because I won't go walking barefoot in the park? You don't have a case, Corey. Adultery, yes, but cold feet, no. Don't you oversimplify this. I am angry, Paul. Can't you see that? It's, uh, 2... 2.15. If I can get to sleep in a half an hour, I can get about five hours sleep. I'll call you from court tomorrow. We'll fight over the phone. Hmm? You will not go to sleep, Paul. You will stay here and fight to save our marriage. If our marriage uh, hinges on those fish balls and Pelmenski, it is not worth saving. Now, dear, I'm crawling into our tiny little single bed. If you care to join me, we're sleeping from left to right tonight. You won't discuss it. You're afraid to discuss it. I married a, a coward. Would you bring in a pail? The closet's dripping. Oh, I hate you. I really, really hate you. Listen! All right, wait a minute, Corey. There's one thing I've learned in court. Be careful when you're tired and angry. You may say something you will soon regret. I am now tired and angry. And a coward! Yeah, listen, maybe you're right then. Maybe we don't have anything in common. Maybe two people should have more than just a blood test first. Maybe they should be checked first for a little common sense, understanding, and emotional maturity. All right. Why don't you get it passed by the Supreme Court? Only those couples bearing a certificate from their psychiatrist proving that they're emotionally mature can be married. Oh, listen. Oh, touch me. Don't you lay a finger on me. I can't stand having you near me. What? I don't even want to be in the same room with you. What's going on here? What? Oh. You're hysterical. I am not hysterical. I know exactly what I'm saying, Paul. It's all over between us. And it's never going to be any good anymore. Oh, well, I... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want to cry. Oh, look, you cry. Please, go ahead. Don't you tell me when to cry. I'm going to cry when I feel like crying. And I'm not going to have my cry until you're out of this apartment. What do you mean, out of this apartment? Well, you certainly don't think we're going to live here anymore, do you? After this? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious, Paul. I want a divorce. Divorce? I'm sorry, Paul. I can't discuss it anymore. Where are you going? 